Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. Thanks again for watching. This is your look ahead video updated on Saturday the 13th of June. Thanks again for watching. Uh, we're out here in West Wales at the moment where you can no doubt hear in the background the rain falling as I speak. And I know for many of you uh, across England and Wales particularly, it's been quite a wet one uh, so far on Saturday. It looks like it's going to take time as well before the rain finally clears away heading into Sunday. So I think it's time to uh, sit back, relax and make the most of what the weather has to offer. Now I did say yesterday that I'd uh, show you some early stuff coming in from the CFS for July. But before we get on to that, because it's a Saturday, we'd like to just take a quick uh, scan around and see what's relevant in the meteorological world just at the moment. And of course much talk is surrounding El Nino just now. And there's a cracking piece in uh, today's, or yesterday's, Washington Post where I'm talking about the Super El Nino of 1982-1983 and um, really how we've advanced in data collection since then. And it goes to show how our knowledge of El Nino and its impacts is still relatively new. Um, I mean, it goes back to the Peruvian fishermen who knew there was a warming of the water off their western coast. They've known about that for centuries, but uh, it's only in the last sort of 30 years that we've been able to um, detect El Nino properly and study it properly. And now, of course, there's an array of sensors that study El Nino, but it's still in its infancy. And I think what this really does show is how meteorology as a whole is still a very, very young science. I make this point all the time. You've got astronomy going back sort of 10, 15,000 years and the knowledge of astronomy and the science that it's based on. But actually, with meteorology, the, the science only goes back 150 years. And in its present form, particularly with modelling, you could argue it's no more than 40 years old at the most. So it's well worthwhile going and reading that piece. Just do a search for Washington Post Super El Nino 82 and it will bring up that article by Jack Williams. But back to the present. This is the surface temperature anomalies, uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, that is, for the 11th of June. And you can see here, look, here's the current El Nino event there extending out across the Pacific Ocean. Notice the cool water towards the west of the British Isles. That's going some way to suppress low pressure out there and encourage the formation of high pressure to the northwest of the UK. Notice too, look, the warm water down in the Mediterranean, which is aiding developments of low pressure down there, uh, particularly given conducive uh, upper air conditions, which is what's happening down there right now. And also, uh, look, the cooler water off the west of Portugal running down into the central parts of the Atlantic. For the anomalies for the various different regions, uh, there's Nino 3.4, which is the one that we're really interested in. That's the, the more telltale uh, region. You notice here, look, these are weekly anom anomalies going back to July 2014. And uh, notice here, look, how we've been increasing steadily through April, through May and into June. And we're now at sort of a 1.3, 1.4 on the index. Um, and the predictions are, this is from uh, the NOAA website, this, it's basically seasonal predictions. So what you've got down here are the seasons. Look, so April, May, June at the top, then May, June, July underneath. Um, and what this is showing, look, is how El Nino, the predictions of El Nino, it's this area here that we're interested in. These are the anomalies. And look, these are the mean anomalies. So you see it's going for a peak of about 1.79 in November, December, January, uh, we went for a 1.8 to a 1.9. So not far off. I still think we're going to go up towards the 1.9s, perhaps even the 2s. But the important thing is that we get that peak through November, December, January, and then we see this fall off. Look, quite a sharp fall off as we head into uh, winter and then through spring next year, eventually wanting to bring us down into a La Nina where we get the cooler water off the Western Pacific into um, summer of next year. Now, a while back, in fact, uh, probably six or seven weeks back now, showed a discharge. This is the mean of the 500 millibar flow from previous years back to 1950 when we had a moderate El Nino that started to develop through the winter months and the spring months and you notice look how it was dominating with high pressure across the UK and in fact extending out across the Atlantic with a trough in the central Atlantic here. 
Now, so far in June, that's how things have been looked. Yeah, we've got that high pressure look extending out into the Atlantic. Not so much signs of the significant trough out here across the Azores. So there are some differences between the two. But remember, this one here is only for 11 days so far. So it'll be interesting to see where we end up at the end of the month. Certainly, uh, models at the moment are predicting more of a trough to develop out here as we head into the back end of June. So it'll be interesting to see how this, uh, how this ends up. And of course, as you know, we've been predicting a more mixed second half to June, although at the moment, I've got to be honest, it looks drier next week um, than we'd initially envisaged and the week after. But what we have to be careful is high bias in the models just at the moment. Still going to go for this idea of a more mixed second half of June. Uh, not unsettled. Remember, we always said it wasn't going to be a washout, wouldn't be unsettled, but more mixed was the way to go. Uh, now, as far as July is concerned, this is what the CFS is seeing just at the moment. Look, it builds the um, ridge off towards the far northeast of the country, puts it across Scandinavia here, and it tries to get established more of a jet coming across southern parts of the country. Now that high would still probably influence northern parts of the country given that scenario, but what we would find is probably Ireland, England and Wales in more mixed and changeable conditions with the jet close by. But interestingly, it keeps this trough off the western parts of Iberia, so it's always tending to drag the energy into this and away from the southern part of the UK, although the southern part of the UK tending into um, more thundery outbreaks of rain or, or a high tendency towards those outbreaks of rain moving up from the continent as indeed they did yesterday. And then for August, well the CFS wants to go good at the moment, look, it tries to build the high in here, get a big ridge going across Scandinavia, really makes much of the low down towards the west of Portugal, puts the circulation something like that into the uh, system so it tries to make August dominated by high pressure across the UK centred up towards the north and uh, really goes for some quite warm conditions as well during the course of August. Now of course this is just one model and it's very early days as of yet but given this prediction for June um, with or well, the remainder of June I should say with the ridge up towards the north and the low down towards the south and this flow in place again so still going for this high being centered mostly up towards the north um the cfs at the moment is not looking too bad a bet now there are some inconsistencies in there which um really need to be raised but we're talking with the private clients about those at the moment and some doubts to do with um the forecasts themselves going through the coming months and factors that could have quite an impact um, but as i say we're talking with private clients about that at the moment if you're interested in becoming a private client use the contact form at the top of the web page at weatherweb.net and get in touch and uh, tell us what you do tell us what you're interested in and we can tell you what we can offer and uh, those sort of discussions are what's going to be available as well uh, in a more diluted format uh, on the premium site um, but certainly you'll be getting the same information that private clients get access to via the premium site too uh, and as I've told you before more about that coming up in the next few weeks. Now if you need a forecast for the next couple of days check out Gary's Fast Forecast but for now whatever you're doing thanks again for watching have a great day and keep the sun shining bye for now.